All right. Hello. Welcome, everybody, to the show. We are live. Andrew is typing away over there. And uh, glad to have everybody on the show. Go ahead and take it from here, Andrew. Hey, thanks, Will. Hey, uh, if you've just joined us, welcome aboard. This is our blood that, that we uh, we discuss all the things that have been happening online in the last seven days or so. Uh, anything that's happened online, social media platforms, you name it, we'll try and cover it. And if you're uh, sitting here or joining us, uh, and you want to be a part of it, we'd love you to join in. We have an open seat or two. So come on in and jump on in. My name is Andrew McCauley from Autopilot Your Business. And of course, Will Henke is here. Hey, Will, where are you from? Where are you from, Will? Um, here, I'm, I'm from Red Canoe Media in St. Louis, Missouri. And I had to turn my silly phone off. It was making noises. But uh, that's, that's what we do. And, and by the way, we do all of this news in a 30-minute segment. So we got to cram it all in there as fast as possible. <laughs> We do, we do, and we'll probably cover about 12 to 15 different topics in that 30 minutes. Uh, sometimes we go a little longer on some little segments, but we'll always wrap it up by the top of the hour. Yep. Hey, uh, Will, do you want to kick us off? There's a few new things going on, and uh, I've heard of a few new changes that I'm not seeing yet that I'll talk about in a minute about blood, but uh, let's kick it off with what you've got on your list. Oh, okay. I think I know one of the blab things, but let's start off with the... Uh, uh, one you just told me about, which is that Google adds the op option where you can actually type by voice inside Google Docs. So that's pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. So um, have you ever used uh, Dragon or any of those voice recognition softwares? I haven't, but I do text usually um, by voice. So I push the little microphone and talk into it, uh, especially when I'm driving and things like that. So uh, it seems to be yep. a lot better. Yeah, right. <clears throat> now, it's um, it's uh, going to be pretty handy because I know I would much rather speak than type. Yeah. And uh, that could be an interesting way to do things, I'm thinking. So I'm looking forward to playing around with that. I only just noticed that this morning, too. So I'm not sure how long that's been around. It's been less than a week because, no, even less because it's only been a couple of days since I've been into my Google Docs. So, yeah. Yeah. Very I'm, cool. I'm interested now, to know if it works uh, with like an iPad or something because I can see me using that. Uh, you know, to write blogs and things when I'm sitting in my lazy chair and uh, yes, for something to do. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, so I'm just thinking about that too. I'm like, I'm, I, I'm actually, I'm actually re, uh, re concentrating on all my blog stuff and I'm uh, recording stuff right now and getting it transcribed. But hey, if this is easier, then it might be the way to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got a bunch so, yeah. more Google news. We'll get back to a little bit later on. Yeah. Uh, one of the cool new things is um, Snapchat uh, has launched geo filters. So I'll put a, put a uh, link in there. But uh, have you played with that at all, or not the geo filters part? I saw it come out just the other day. Um, can't tell you too much about it, but it, it's mainly for advertisers, or is it just for everybody? Well, it is for everybody, but it's an it's an advertising platform. So um, geo fencing has been out for a while, where you draw a fence around something and then ads only show within that area. So Snapchat is kind of doing that same thing uh, where you draw a fence. I think there's a 20,000 square foot minimum. And uh, I think it's five bucks per hour for you to show your little uh, your little geo thing inside somebody's Snapchat. So I can see some really interesting uses for this, especially some of my clients. Uh, for instance, a client that has a mattress store here in town I can see us drawing yeah. a Snapchat filter or, or fence around one of the competitors and showing our mm -hmm. ads in Snapchat to their competitors. Five bucks for an hour. I mean, yeah, really. That's easy. You know? so that's that's yeah, fencing. That yeah, fencing can be taken anywhere. You know, um, not just Snapchat, but you can do all sorts of ads on things like that. Do you know? Have you ever heard of geo retargeting? That's something I, I have learned not. the other week. So, so I was at a uh, a, a convention the week, and there was someone. Uh, I'm talking about uh, mobile geo retargeting. What, what's this? So basically, you take what you've just said there. You grab the fence. <clears throat> you go around your competitors, and then once they've once they've been in that inside that fence, and you've actually targeted them, then you can actually retarget them when they've left that fence. So whether they're anywhere inside that fence or not, once they've been in there, they're tagged, so you can market to them anywhere. So imagine doing that at a convention, right? Let's say you go to a 
conventional. We've got Coachella Festival up the road here in a couple of weeks. You know, we could geofence Coachella and then in, target anybody for the next couple of months or whatever it is we want. doesn't matter where they are, go back into the world. Uh, we've got the ability to target them. So geo-targeting is coming out. It's going to be a pretty big, big, big player in the mobile space this year too, I think. Yeah, very interesting. So I can see some other uh, things. I'm going to a conference tomorrow. Uh, yep. I mean, this is brand new. So I could actually draw a square around where the conference is and Correct. show my ads to people that are going to that conference without being a sponsor of that conference. You know what I mean? So I can do that for yep. five bucks yep. an hour. And then, yep. and, then the and then follow them around. Yeah, follow around for the next six months. Right, that's pretty sweet. Because I mean, I already know it's yeah. my it's my target audience. So. Uh huh. And well, the thing about this, um, that's that's something locally to you, right? But you can pick any audience, any market, any convention that's got your target market anywhere in the world. Right. Right. You don't have to be in St. Louis, Missouri. You can be in Vegas. You look at all the Vegas conventions coming up and go, wow, all my target marketing can turn up there, there, there on this date, this date, this date. Let's run some ads to that. And then just keep pinging them and targeting them after that. Right. Wow, that's yeah. pretty cool because you can just get a list of conferences and, and set up your ads ahead of time and, and yeah. show them that day. You don't even have to be there. Uh -huh. be there. Uh -huh. I'm glad nobody's listening to our blab right now because this is super top secret. <laughs> That's right. No, this is terrific. Uh, I mean, I can see some uses with you know WordCamp, for instance. If you're if you're doing Word uh -huh. uh, WordPress, or if you're a graphics designer or something like that. Ah, very yeah. good. Lots of, lots of cool things. Well, you know, I got my digital traffic institute to go and target some uh, big uh, things like Teams traffic and conversion summit and click funnels and all those ones too. You know, so it's pretty right. cool. Yeah, yeah, very yep. neat. Anyway. That's our excitement. We're going to end this blab and we're going to go and run some ads. <laughs> no, not really. So uh, anyway, that's that's what's going on. Um, what else you got there? Anything else? Yeah, we got uh, a couple things related to Facebook. Um, the uh, instant filters uh, are available to everybody starting on April uh, 12th. So uh, you mean, I'm sorry. Uh, instant, you mean instant, instant articles? articles? Yeah. Yeah, which I think is uh, yeah. related. It's kind of like a bl uh, blogging platform, but it keeps you on Facebook let you promote or post articles directly to Facebook, basically. Yeah, so so instant articles is going to be a pretty big play. It's um it's designed for mobile mobile people specifically, right? And the idea behind it is that it's not going to take a lot of data to load. So if somebody's reading Facebook and they're on their on their data plan rather than a Wi-Fi, um, it's not going to suck your data down, especially if you've got articles that have got images and videos and stuff like that in there. So you actually have to have um, it has to conform to specific um, uh, t sort of uh, um, structure that Facebook give you. But having said that, there's a couple of plugins if, if you're using WordPress to use that you can turn your data into um, a instant articles compliant article if you want. So uh, oh, I so think does it uh, you know, into a feed or or uh, does it, yeah, it's it a conversion. It turns it it's more of a conversion than anything else. So, you know, um, if it's a plugin, I'm I'm guessing that um, it's going to be one of those things where you pu publicize it on your website first, so you've got the first right of uh, having it on there, and then syndicate it to Facebook, which means you're not going to get pinged for duplicate content because Facebook aren't going to get slapped by Google. That's for sure. Right. Right. Oh, very interesting. So mm. um, another thing yeah, that's coming well. out. Yeah, April twelfth is when that that goes available for everyone. I I guess it's available for some people now for testing purposes. Uh, and Wall Street everybody. Journal, Wall Street Journal, and BuzzFeed have got it already. So if you went looking for them, you'd find their instant articles. Um, it looks pretty slick. It looks pretty nice, especially on a, on a uh, on a tablet. It you know comes out real clean. So uh, have a look if you're thinking about what what is it all about. Check that out. Okay. Um, also, Facebook emotions or reactions, I guess they're called, is is uh, live for everyone now and, and I'm starting to see them in my feed as well. So <laughs> yeah. uh, some of them have already been misused, uh, especially the angry one I've seen used in political related posts and things like that. And, uh, you know, I can see a I'll whole bunch with a flat to drop, perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I can see uh -huh. I can see how it's pretty cool, but I can also see uh, how some people will misuse them in uh, in an ignorant way if if there's no other way to say that. So 
I think I think we've you and I have spoken about this before on this show previously about you know it doesn't matter what you do people are going to use it to whatever way they can possibly use it and right. there's going to be people upset with it but anyway what do you do yeah yeah definitely yeah. agree yeah. but uh, have have you been playing with the the new reactions at all or no I haven't I haven't really um, I really no I need to get into it I just haven't okay on a mobile device what you have to do is it just shows like. And if you hold down the like, then the little buttons show up, at least on the Android, I would assume it's probably the same, but then you can select one of those six that you like. Right, right, right. Uh, huh. It wasn't, wasn't dramatically, um, it wasn't brought out in any way on mobile that said, hey, here's how to do this. I guess people just figured it out. So, And the other thing I've noticed is that you, if, you're, if you say sad, then you can change your mind in... Uh, choose like instead, and it takes the sad away and adds the like. <laughs> so you can't. I'm just putting a ha ha. I'm just putting. I'm adding a ha ha to your little uh, post you just did about our lab right now. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, cool. Also, uh, uh, the uh, uh, came out and uh, has a terrific little uh, addition to some other different. Uh, emoticons that they would like to see added to Facebook. So just a little humor, you know, how the, uh -huh. opener, how the opener reads. Yep, yep. Um, Interesting. Facebook ads um, and Facebook Canvas, Canvas, that's kind yes. of a big deal. Um, the Tell me Canvas about that one. Thing, what's that? Tell me about that one. Um, so Canvas um, apparently so Canvas is a mobile, I'm hearing a, a, a go. feedback again. Yeah, it's okay. I just can't stand listening to myself while I'm trying to talk. <laughs> what? Oh, good yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, so Facebook Canvas is uh, is a mobile device system where you can see ads in full screen. Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of them in action yet, but it looks kind of cool that the whole ad platform is basically going to change because you can turn the mobile ad uh, from when it's just this little thing you're scrolling through to when you click on it, it goes full screen and it becomes more of an experience uh, if mm. done correctly. So that will be very interesting to see uh, how that works uh, and how different brands use it. Got it. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, good. We'll see how that goes in the next couple of months. Right, right. And uh, staying with the Facebook theme, which is not unusual on our show, um, Facebook is finally going to add live streaming to Android devices. So, uh, the finally, iPhone, finally, iPhone phones, uh, users won't be the only ones using that or being able to get to it. So, uh, be nice to have that on the Android. And, and as we've talked about in the past, uh, how is that going to impact Periscope and Meerkat? And uh, what was the other one? Meve, Meve, or something like that. Uh, me V, we got me V out now, and uh, yeah, so you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see. Um, uh, you know, these little things like these video, um, these video platforms like your Periscope and that, I think they're going to have a little niche market. There'll be people using instant video on, on YouTube, oh, I'm sorry, on Facebook, but I think this, uh, I think these little ones will still have their own little supporters and followers, and uh. Sure. You know, I don't think I don't think they're going to get ruined by it by any means. Yeah, agreed, agreed. So that's all of the uh, the Facebook. You got anything else on Facebook in your in your little uh, list of things? Um, I yes, you can actually now also invite non Facebook users to events via email, so you can have a. a an event put up in Facebook, create an event, and you can actually invite people who are not Facebook users to actually come to that event. So if you haven't got a Facebook, if you've got a friend that hasn't used Facebook, that's rare, first start. <laughs> and secondly, uh, now you can invite them to the event that's on Facebook. Well, what if you have a, a list, everybody has a list, and you invite all the people, you know, you upload that list, invite all those people, maybe they have a Facebook account, but it's not the one related to the email you have. Um, right. That's interesting too. You know, so yeah, I'm wondering definitely. if they're allowing, how, how, how many emails do you know are they allowing to you to dump in or do you not know? Uh, I don't know. It's only just been, it's only just come out uh, on what's the date today. Yeah. Like two days ago. So I, I haven't even dug into that yet. I haven't had a need to dig into it, but um, I just know that came up. So yeah. Yeah. Would be kind of cool if you can upload lists kind of like you do with Facebook audiences. And, uh, yeah, interesting. Hey, 
get them get them back to your uh, to your Facebook page, retarget them, all those kind of things too. Yeah, definitely. All right, cool. Um, um, anything else for Facebook? Uh, let me just see if I've got any. Uh, I think I had one more thing. Facebook. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Facebook has um, birthday video cam for iOS, so uh, iOS devices. On Monday, they introduced another video feature, um, but with birthdays in mind. So if you've got friends with birthdays, um, you can uh, you can go to your friend's birthday profile, tap the banner video prompt where you'll usually write happy birthday and record a little video for them too. So um, so it's just, uh, I mean, you can always do videos, but this is on our iOS. So I've got a friend's birthday today. I'm going to go and do that for her and see how that goes. And, See yeah, that's kind of interesting. It's a little more personal that way than than just the the old happy birthday. Just the generic happy birthday from people. Sometimes you don't even know. It's like really, you really care? Do you really care? You don't care, right? So, or yeah, on, LinkedIn, uh, on LinkedIn, I think it says happy birthday. Hope you're doing well. Or it's always the same message. You know? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then the only other one, Facebook. Uh, I think we covered that. You know, we covered that one too. So no, I think we're good for Facebook right now. Yep. Okay. Good. For uh, a couple things on Google. Uh, they've released the AMP, which is the Accelerated Mobile Pages. Uh, haven't seen that in the live, uh, but that's going to be kind of cool. Where it downloads, uh, it's a it's a um, specific structure. I think that they come up with that allows. Uh, web pages to download quicker and did we talk about this uh last week yeah we? yeah it's the same principle as what uh instant articles are going to be i think it's it's all designed with mobile in mind to um reduce the data the data consumption of uh mobile devices when you're not on a wi-fi network yeah and uh we talked about oh probably a month or two ago where twitter is starting to show things uh preload things on 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 phones so that you can see them when you're offline or not you know not available so yeah. all these different services are doing something similar really mm -hmm. i mean a lot of this stuff is very mobile related so it's kind of interesting to see how the trend is moving in that direction yeah and it's it's moving fast and i think by this time next year you know we, it'll be it'll, everything will be so mobile it's not funny it's so yeah. so focused on mobile it's not funny yep yep uh, Google also came out yesterday or today and said that they're going to shut down their compare services uh, mm. on March 23rd. Uh, so that's that's coming up. Uh, I, I don't know how many people used it. I never used it. I don't, I don't think. I, typically, you know, I was talking with one of my clients earlier today, and typically what people do is they find what they want, then they go online and start to do some sort of price shopping. You know, just to kind mm -hmm. of compare Amazon versus maybe Google Shopping or something like that. Uh, yeah. But I don't know how many people actually use compare tools. Obviously, not many enough for Google to want to shut it down. Yep, obviously not enough. So uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, um, Google also came out this week and said that they are going to shut down all right sidebar ads. Uh, that's yeah, a tell us big about one. that. That was a big one because I know I messaged you on Saturday when we heard about it and think, whoa, look at this. This is going to be crazy. Yeah. Uh, the article that I read had two different sides to the story. They Some people think that it's going to really skyrocket the ad prices because there's less real estate. Uh, other people think that it's going to just kind of stay the same and maybe uh, shake some people out. So what they're going to do is they're going to show three ads at the top, three ads at the bottom, and then on very popular searches or widely searched things, uh, such as, you know, things related to a smartphone or something like that. They'll show a fourth ad at the top as well. But no more right sidebar stuff. That'll be all your knowledge graph and things of that sort. So mm. uh, how many ads did they have before? I think they had 12 or 13, six. if you looked at them all. I think they had six. Well, I think they had six on the right-hand side, and then they could flick through. You could always look for more as well if there was more available. Right. Um, but six there, uh, three up top and usually four. Four, three or four down the bottom as well. So yeah, yeah, interesting to see. Yeah, that's pretty big news. Uh, I haven't really seen. Of course, it just happened. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how how different agencies react to that as far as uh, what the pricing is and and what's yeah. really going on behind the scenes. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, interesting. Okay, cool. Google. Anything else on Google there? Nothing else on Google. Uh, one um, LinkedIn thing. 
You got anything on Google? I got nothing on Google. No. Okay. All right. Uh, LinkedIn is going to run their first TV ad during the Oscars this this weekend. I uh, saw that. Yeah, kind of interesting. I don't I don't know that people that are interested in um, the celebrities and all that stuff that's going on are, are really LinkedIn targets audience, but uh, whatever, right? What do you think? That, what do you think the focus is going to be on? Any predictions? What do I think? Oh, what the commercial is going to be about? Yeah. No, I have no idea. I would assume it's just to get more people to sign up for LinkedIn, but it's, I don't. But it, is it going to focus on the content? Audience. Is it going to focus on the content platform or is it going to focus on the ability to get jobs or is it going to focus on the ability to build a network sort of thing? What do you reckon? I, I'm, right. I don't know, it's going to be interesting to say maybe it's all three. Yeah. Yeah. If I had to bet, I would probably say it's going to be more of a job thing. Uh, going back to mm -hmm. the target audience, I, I don't know that uh, the, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how they they came up with those demographics, but I'm sure that maybe they, they maybe going to target out of, out of work actors because they're all watching it, all watching the Grammys, <laughs> or like the the show that they could have been on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So uh, interesting to uh, see. Yeah. Well, well I'll be sure. I'll be sure to read the reports the next day. I'm not going to watch it. I don't think. Yeah. I won't be watching it either. Um, Blab, I know that you said you had some different things about Blab. The one that uh, maybe that's on your list as well is there's a, a new button that I do not see uh, that says share the last 30 seconds. So kind of interesting. Can, that you, that see, button can, you, can you see that now, the button? Nope. Nope. Right. So it's not it's not available everywhere because um, you have maybe a host. I'm only a guest, so I wouldn't even see. But anyway, um, <laughs> the uh, – the uh, button lets you share the last 30 seconds of, uh, not the last 30 seconds of the entire blab, um, but the actual, let's say that you and I are talking about something really important and we said, hey, that was pretty cool, or someone did something and you think, I want to share that. You can click on the yellow button that says, share that last 30 seconds that you just saw as a video um, as a video file to your different networks. So, so now you can actually... Um, just make sure you've got some good information, click on share, and it's got some cool feature in there. I think it's great. Not rolling out to everybody just yet, but they are have been testing it, and it's, it's going to be available pretty soon for everybody. Yep, and I think it shows up as a little yellow button there uh, for yeah. people that do have it. Yeah, yeah definitely. And then... Yeah, good. And there was another. There was another. There was another feature too, which was rolling out, and I'm just trying to remember, find out what it was. Um, I haven't uh, seen anything different on my end, other than when you called in, I had to, uh, I had to view who was calling in, and then I could accept or deny there. So that was a little bit different. Right. Um, let's just see if there's another thing on the no can't find it it's gone okay. <laughs> it's gone go 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 all right all right and then uh, well let's so the last piece of news that I have is um, somebody came up with uh, some sort of a way to start tracking when their friends are sleeping by monitoring when uh, when they were last on Facebook or when they were last using messenger so they've <laughs> he found in the code where you could actually pull that code out and create like a spreadsheet or a database or something that showed when these people were not on Facebook, therefore probably asleep. Really? That means I've been sleeping for two days. I wish it was true. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I don't, I don't know that it has that many practical uses, but if you want to track your friend's sleeping patterns, you certainly can. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, take that to the Sleep Institute and see how they like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got two two things before we wrap up. Um, right. Instagram. Instagram. I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger on Instagram. I'm loving Instagram right now. Um, it's topped two hundred thousand advertisers. So two hundred thousand people have put ads on Instagram. Saw that. Now. So yeah. It's uh that's growing pretty quick. I think they only launched ads uh, last year sometimes so uh people are getting onto the ads and i'm seeing a lot of ads on instagram of course but um yeah so that's growing think, and the other thing I think that number is low i mean two hundred thousand. it's available to everybody 
it is available to everybody. Um, and I wonder if that's one off people that's consistently having 200,000 people advertising. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, I guess. Um, yeah, well, yeah, 1.6 billion users on there. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, um, Instagram has 400, 400 million users now, I think. Oh, sorry. I'm thinking Facebook and the way you know that you can advertise. Oh, 1. 6, 1. 6 billion. Yeah, yeah, billion. Yeah. Across the platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right, yeah. What's the other thing you got? Uh, the other one I got is Pinterest adds movie and recipe data to its pins. So if you've got a pin, if you're pinning a recipe, now you can stick a whole bunch of interesting information, rich data about ingredients, cooking times, and servings, and that wow. sort of stuff to, to your pins. And movies, um, you've got uh, the ability to put all sorts of interesting information into movie pins as well. So. Um, well, actually, you can pin, you can pin movies to Pinterest, which is interesting. Interesting. Yeah, really so, yeah. interesting. So all, all this is uh, inside Open Graph data, I would assume, so that it's shareable yeah. in other places. In Pinterest, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yep. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. I can see my wife uses uh, Pinterest for recipes and things a lot, so. I can really? See well, there you go. Yeah. So that's a uh, that is going to be interesting. So I'll um I'll put the link in here for for your wife as well so she can <laughs> yeah, I'll send it check it right. out <laughs> check it That'll out work. yeah 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 there you go awesome well i think we covered it i think that is about it for me let me just make sure i got nothing else on mine uh yep 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 i think we covered everything awesome good yeah, job we, we knocked it out right on time look at that all right well <laughs> thanks for joining us thanks for joining us everybody and uh, we're here every Friday, 10.30 Pacific, 12.30 Central, 1.30 Eastern, talking about online marketing, changes that are happening, social platforms. Come and be a guest. Jump on. Like the thousands of guests we had today that are lining up, we couldn't get everybody <laughs> on. But next time, you could possibly be a guest on our show too. Uh, apply in writing to will at redcanoemedia.com and he will go through your application and put you on. Right. Yeah. There's a backlog right now, but we'll, we'll make sure to, to get, we'll get there. That. We'll get there. Yeah. It should be fine, but we'll get there. <laughs> All right. All right well, Take care. Have, have a good weekend. You too. All right. <laughs> See ya. Yeah.